Okay guys, so in this video, this is uh, homework number 27, and we're going to be finding zeros of polynomial functions. Now, we're trying to break these guys down to something that's of degree 2, that's quadratic. Then we can use quadratic methods, like completing the square and the quadratic formula. Now this first function has degree 4, which means I'm looking for how many, how many zeros, Jabari, am I looking for? That's right, I'm looking for four solutions. And how many have I given you? Two. I've given you two? How is that possible? There's only one listed here. That's right, whisper it, Jessica. Oh, call out. If one of the zeros is complex, then that means that x equals what is also a solution? That's right, because complex zeros occur in conjugate pairs. Good job. <laughs> yeah. So your k value here is 1 minus 2i. Yeah, go back to doing your own work now. When you are using a complex number for a k value, you want to give yourself plenty of space here. So here's 2, 3, 2, 23, and 30. So bring down the 2, and this gives you 2. Multiply here, and that's 2 minus 4i. I know you guys are watching to make sure I don't make a mistake. Appreciate that. When you add these guys, you get 5 minus 4i. Now, I'm feeling kind of lazy here, so I'm just going to use my calculator, but you won't be able to do this on the test, so um, it's whatevs. I need to multiply the 1 minus 2i times the 5 minus 4i. So, 1 minus 2i times 5 minus 4i. Remember your i is going to be above your decimal. I get negative 3 minus 14i. Sweet. So, negative 3 minus 14i. Combine this is negative 1 minus 14i. Then I've got to multiply again. So, this is 1 minus 2i times negative 1 minus 14i. Negative 29 minus 12i. Alright? So, negative 29 minus 12i. And that gives me 4 where did I get 4 from? See, you guys weren't paying attention. Now I've got to correct on a video. What am I paying you guys for? I'm not. Oh, you need to go uh, t talk it up with the union boss. So this is negative 6 minus 12i. So one more multiplication should take care of this. Let's see, we have 1 minus 2, I, no, keep sharpening your pencil, I'm not recording at all, times <laughs> negative 6 minus 12i. Sorry. This, is, this is real TV right here. <laughs> and we get, ah, oh, sweet, we get negative 30, so that means that I was not lying to you when I said that 1 minus 2i is a 0. Don't worry, I'll make sure that I tag all of you guys uh, on the video so you can look for yourself. Yes. If you don't know what a tag is, how old are you? I know what a tag is. So now that I have this reduced here, I'm going to use my other zero that I know is supposed to be here, which is 1 plus 2i. So bring down the 2, multiply, so that's 2 plus 4i. That gives me 7. Multiply here is 7 plus 14i. That gives you 6. Multiply here is 6 plus 12i, and you get a remainder of 0, which is, again, what we're supposed to have. Now, the question here is asking us to find all of the zeros of the function. We have 2, and then we're going to take this guy. 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 
and we're going to set this equal to zero. Now, keep in mind that this started off as x to the fourth, then it became x to the third, and then x squared. So to solve this guy, we're very fortunate that this guy will factor. This factors as 2x plus 3 times x plus 2. So we end up with x equals negative 3 halves or x equals negative 2. We're supposed to have four zeros, and that's what we have. Your zeros are negative 3 halves, negative 2, 1 minus 2i, and 1 plus 2i. So there are my four zeros. Now this next problem doesn't give you anything. It just says use the rational zeros theorem. So this is where you have to figure out what are the possible rational zeros to use. So when we look at this, you know, plus or minus p over q, p is a factor of your constant term, which is 21. So the factors there are 1 and 21, or 3 and 7. Your lead coefficient is just 1, so that's the only factor you can have. So these are the possible rational zeros. Plus or minus 1, 3, 7, or 21. Now the easiest zero to check is 1, and you can check that just by adding the coefficients. 1 plus 5 minus 17 minus 21 does not equal 0, so it's not a 0. But we can check negative 1. To check negative 1, change the sign of the coefficients of the odd degrees. So that means negative 1, keep this guy positive, change this sign, keep this guy the way it is. When I add all of this, I end up with 0, so that tells me that this guy is a 0. So when I do synthetic division, I'm going to use negative 1 for my k value. My coefficients are 1, 5, negative 17, and negative 21. Now I said that it's supposed to equal 0, so let's see if that's true. So that's a 1. Multiply, I get negative 1. Add is 4. Multiply to get negative 4. Add is negative 21. Multiply again, I get 21 and there's my remainder of 0. So I need to find all zeros, so now I have to take this guy, x squared plus 4x minus 21, set him equal to 0 and solve. How does he factor? Anybody? Yeah, hey Jessica, how does it factor? Uh, 3 and 7. So x plus 7, x minus 3, which means we get what for zeros? That's right, negative 7 or positive 3. I'm so glad that I am alone among a crowd. So, your zeros will be the negative one we started with, negative 7 and positive 3. I had degree 3. I expected three solutions, and that's exactly what I got.